These are four of the most popular dog food brands that I would personally not feed as a nutritionist and a research dog mom, starting with Purina. Oh, and make sure you stay tuned because at the end I will be sharing three brands that I absolutely love. And one of the first things that stood out to me was the immediate ingredient splitting. And in the first four ingredients of this bag, you see meat once and you see corn and rice three times. And what I mean by ingredient splitting is that you see that they have corn in here in two different ways. This to me is highly misleading to pet parents, especially if it's not something you know to look for. I'm also not a fan of the fact that Purina is widely known as being feed grade, not human grade in the meat that they add in their food. Feed grade are foods or meats that are unfit for human consumption. I feed my dogs foods that are human grade, again, fit for human consumption. This food also has several controversial ingredients that researched pet parents myself or integrative or even holistic veterinarians would never recommend to feed or would feed their personal dogs. One example is soybean. First off, because it is widely known to be highly GMO. And even more than that, it's often just added to a food as a cheap, filler ingredient because what it can do is increase the protein percent so that the food looks like it has more protein. When it comes to foods that I eat or feed my dogs, I prioritize foods and meats that are sourced responsibly, ethically, or sustainably. And I couldn't find any of that information with Purina. So their sourcing is highly questionable. And also they add caramel coloring to their food. Like why does my dogs have limited color seeing ability need coloring added to their food and these natural flavors that we just don't really know what they are. Let's talk about one more really popular one that I personally would avoid, which is From. Now this brand used to be highly respected in the pet nutritionist community. Now is this brand the worst one on the market? Of course not. Is it one of the ones that I would initially gravitate to? No, and I'll explain why in a second, but some of the pros of this food is the fact that it's family owned, it's made right here in the US out of Wisconsin, and it is a pretty evidently pet focused brand, not only profit driven, just based on my personal research, but in some of their foods like this bag, for example, they have ingredients in there that I personally would not feed my dog. They ingredient split at least three times. So they did this with rice, barley by pearled and whole barley, as well as potatoes by adding sweet and regular potatoes. To be frank, I'm also not a big fan of oat groats this high in the ingredient deck when paired with so many other, what I personally consider, lower quality filler ingredients. Now this next one kind of hits home for me because it is a brand that I remember feeding probably over 10 years ago. I remember buying the bag of wellness for my Labrador. I think I got it from Petco or PetSmart when I thought it was a really high quality brand. In the first seven ingredients alone, you have barley, oatmeal, peas, potatoes. I also typically avoid foods that add things like natural flavorings because my question back to the brand is if it is such high quality and if your food is species or biologically appropriate, which means foods or ingredients that were designed to be digested by dogs, then why do we need to add flavorings? Think about in the human food category for snacks, ultra processed snacks that you would go buy, potato chips, cookies, cereals, and you look at those ingredients, what are you gonna find? You're gonna find natural or artificial flavorings. The key is flavorings. Why do they add that in there? to get us to want to eat it more and more and more so we don't want to eat anything else. Again, their sourcing to me is questionable. Comment below if you know how they source their animals, but I don't see anything about responsible source, humane sourcing, ethical or sustainable sourcing, which is a concern for me. In addition to that, this is also a cooked and extruded kibble, which is basically, again, just the most ultra processed form of food that a dog can eat, which is why you're gonna see at the last part of the ingredient deck, the last 23 plus ingredients are vitamin synthetics. These are synthetic or artificial ingredients that are added to add some kind of nutrition back to the food because it's all really mostly and primarily cooked out. Now, before I jump into Taste of the Wild, which I'm asked about frequently, let's talk about Canaday and then I'll go into three brands that I absolutely love. So Canaday was a really popular food, again, among pet nutritionists and really researched pet parents, uh, but it's not one of the ones that, again, I gravitate to super quickly or would gravitate to. Let's look at these ingredients. This is just mind-boggling to me. Six are non-meat filler ingredients like 
turkey meal, lamb meal, brown rice, white rice, rice bran, oatmeal, barley, peas, and potatoes. And when I see ingredients like that, I can't help but picture crackers, like fortified crackers or fortified bowl of cereal and feeding that to my dog. If I was feeding any of these brands, one of the first things I would do and make sure I did every single day is of course always having fresh, plain water readily available. In addition, I would be adding hydration, natural hydration to the bowl. That to me would be critical. Examples, raw goat milk, bone broth with no salt or seasonings added, a raw goat kefir are just a few examples. And just like these other brands, Canada is ingredient splitting. Look at this, they have rice in here in three different forms. And just like the others, this one has over 19, 20 synthetic vitamin packs in here. And vitamin synthetic packs aren't necessarily the worst thing in the world. It's just when you combine it, in my opinion, with all of these other cheap filler ingredients, the production process where it's manufactured and cooked at such high temperatures, and all the other things we talked about, it just is a lot of, no's and negatives for me to where it's just not worth it, especially since some of these brands are a little bit more expensive than others. Okay, now let's talk about Taste of the Wild. My mom actually fed this to my dogs growing up for a period of time. So I grew up really being comfortable around Taste of the Wild. And the reason I wanted to show this brand because I want you to look at the back of the bag on the guaranteed analysis and look how high this protein percent is, 32%. This is much more up my alley. Now I do wonder if a good chunk of this protein percent is coming from non-meat animal sources or non-animal sources, which is something that I'm not the biggest fan. For example, they add sorghum and millet, which sorghum and millet are actually actually fairly similar ingredients. So it does make me question whether or not they are trying to ingredient split without being overtly obvious about it. Now me, even though I spend so much time researching dog food and reaching out to brands directly to their formulators, directly to their decision makers, I almost missed this next part. And when I saw it, I was really frustrated and is why I actually added it to this list because it is a little bit more of a popular food within the pet nutritionist community in some, and that is they do a lot of marketing around the fact that their food has probiotics and blueberries, which we all know can be healthy for dogs. And that is a marketing tactic. And the reason I say that is because if you look at the ingredient deck, you look really closely, the blueberries and the probiotics that they add is after salt. And as I said before, Anything in that ingredient panel after salt is gonna represent less than 1% of the entire bag. That means it's basically negligible in my opinion, and it really frustrates me when I feel misled. And they also add natural flavorings in this, which is a really generic term to say that this could be a multitude of things to enhance the flavor. Again, why do we need to enhance the flavor? So now let's jump into the foods that I do love, and these will all be linked down below. In fact, I have a dog food list where not only do I list the foods that I love in all categories from kibble to cooked, to raw, to freeze dried, and all treats, I even give you why. And I do that because I never want that list or any of my videos to tell you what to do. Instead, I want these resources to serve as a tool for you to do more research, explore, connect with your vet, and hopefully even find a more holistic or integrative vet that is more open to you feeding a fresher diet if that's something you're more open to. Now, three foods on Amazon that I love, first is actually brand new to Amazon. Oh, by the way, if you got value from this, it would mean the world if you click that subscribe button to help our mission to save all the damn dogs, like my foster here, Marlo. And the first brand is Front of the Pack. This is a very special food and it's one I trust wholeheartedly. And the few reasons I love it, it is sourced responsibly. There are zero vitamin synthetics. And when you look at the front of the bag, that's why they call it front of the pack. All the ingredients are on the front. This is also air dried at low, gradual, slow temperatures, which retains so much more of the moisture, the more the nutrients, the protein, they're much more bioavailable, makes the food more palatable, but it's still easy to feed and shelf stable. Open Farm, now Open Farm has some kibbles that I like more than others. So I will have linked below the one that I like specifically. One thing I love about this brand that really stands out is that they have really transparent sourcing, probably one of the 
best sourced foods in terms of humane, responsible sourcing in the extruded ultra processed kibble category. And of course, if you followed me for any length of the time, you know that I'm a big fan of Carna4 and Carna4 is family owned. It is the one of the only synthetic free, meaning no synthetic vitamins, kibble on the market. And unlike all the other kibbles we talked about today, this kibble is baked, meaning it's not cooked and extruded at high temperatures, it's baked at lower temperatures, which again, can help retain some of that moisture and definitely retain more of the nutrients and protein in there, which is why they don't need to add any at all vitamins, synthetics, or artificial ingredients or flavorings because the food, the nutrients, everything, it all comes from real whole ingredients. Again, all of these will be linked down below and I also have a full shop page of all of my dog favorites from beds to shampoos to supplements to toys to bowls, leashes and harnesses, you name it. Don't forget to click that subscribe button and check me out on TikTok and Instagram and Facebook at Rachel Fasaro where you'll get daily updates on my foster dog Marlo and daily dog tips and I hope you have a beautiful day. Goodbye!